Good afternoon. I hope um, all of you who've been here today for the open house have had a good time. Have you had a good time? Yes. Are you sure? Um, I'm, uh, I'm, as I said this morning, I'm really happy that you are uh, here today. And of course, welcome to uh, all of the GSD's students uh, to this lecture by uh, Philippe Ram. I'm very happy also that uh, Philippe is here. Um, Philippe has not been here since 2007, and we hope that he'll be spending more time with us. So hopefully this will be the first of many more things to come. <clears throat> Those of you who are familiar with the structure of the school know that over the past few years, we have established a series of what we call platforms. The idea of these platforms is to have connections between the departments, which is different than what is actually happening inside each department. So there is a technology platform, and there's a practice platform, and uh, there is also a history and theory platform. But we also have a platform which is called sensory media platform. The reason that we call this sensory media is because historically, designers deal with issues of representation. And many of the things that they're dealing with are visual. But actually, more and more, we find ourselves in a situation where, as designers, we have to deal both with visual stuff, but also non-visual things, haptic things, material things, sensory things, um, conditions that really affect our body and our body's relationship to the environment more broadly. A number of the faculty, some of them are here, uh, have been working very seriously and systematically to then expose the school to a range of ideas from artists to visual practitioners to smell artists and so on that really help to enhance our understanding of uh, the way in which we relate to the environment. In part, this is also a reaction or, or, or has to do with the fact that um, as architects, for example, we are used to dealing with questions of structure as something that's been primary and really with the making of space. But this focus on sensory media and in many ways the work of uh, Philippe Ram exemplifies this kind of practice. It's also a mode of practice in architecture, relates to issues of landscape, environment more broadly, that now also uses not just bricks and mortar, but really air and light and uh, vapor as elements for the shaping of the space. Even in the context of topics like environmental systems, still a lot of the focus today on visualizing those things because we have computer software that allows you to understand the modeling of buildings, for example, in terms of their response to environmental conditions. But it's, we're at a point where we are actually exploring more and more the way in which the relationship of the body to this kind of non-visual conditions now need different ways of examining. And I think Philippe Ram, again, is at the forefront of this kind of uh, investigation. With projects in France, Taiwan, Italy, and Germany, he has, uh, in the past few years, become involved with a very large um, park project, the Taichung Gateway Park in Taiwan, and a series of other um, projects um, in different parts of the globe, in Germany. And uh, he's also been involved in a number of exhibitions, has taught at a lot of schools, and has also promoted his work through a series of publications um, focusing on physiological architecture, a book called Distortions, uh, another one called Environment, Approaches for Tomorrow, and lastly, uh, 
Architecture Meteorologique, which came out in 2009. Would you please join me in welcoming Philippe Ram? Okay, uh, thank you very much for the invitation here. I'm very happy to be here. And uh, it is my second lecture in Harvard. I was in 2007 uh, uh, here. And um, I, I think it's, uh, for me, it's quite interesting sh to show a kind of uh, phase after the first one, because I think there is a kind of uh, continuity between the work I was doing uh, in 2007 and the work I'm doing today. Maybe we could start with a, a visual and, and maybe a little slow down the light because my images are quite... Uh, so, um, so first, I, I would like to say that uh, I think architecture is um, the design of the atmosphere. I think it's not, a, it's not a new idea. It's not something that I'm... in. Invent, but I think it's really the target of architecture. If you think what is architecture, it's to create space, uh, to create a, a pocket of space where you are protected from the rain, protected uh, from the cold when it's too cold, protected from the warm when it's too warm. And I think this is a primary idea of architecture. And um, and if we want to uh, think what is the element of architecture, I think the the element is the space itself. It's really, it's a void, it's an emptiness, it's uh, the, what we call the space. And maybe uh, before we didn't know what really was the space. It was like uh, in the Aristotle philosophy, there is this idea of, uh, of that the, the air was something, was one element, but of course, uh, it's quite recently that we discover that the, the air is not empty, it's, uh, the space is not empty. Uh, if you press on the air after one moment, you could know more because there is a kind of pressure in the air. And it was only in 17th century that we understand this uh, with Lavoisier. And in the 18th century, we start with, to understand that the air was not one element, but it was composed by different gases. There is oxygen, nitrogen, some things that are inside this invisible world. And in the 19th century, we also discover that there is some, uh, some bacteria, so some life inside the air. And during the 20th century, we understand all the electromagnetic wavelengths, the, the spectrum of the, of the air. So it means today we know that the air is full of things. And uh, me, if I am interesting into this invisible quality of uh, architecture, it's not because I think it's, not, it's uh, immaterial. I think uh, at the opposite, it's completely material. I think the, the space is a, is a materiality. And uh, we, we, as an architect, uh, maybe this is the main difference uh, from an art architect to a sculptor. A sculptor is designing the solid, is designing a, a visual material and the architect uh, has to design uh, invisible material. And uh, if we, uh, uh, so we could uh, say that uh, this invisible material, this is the climate, this is the atmosphere. And so we, tr we could try to, um, to do the list or to quantify what, what is composed the, the void and um, I start uh, five years ago to do a kind of uh, a little uh, in an old-fashioned way, like in the 19th century, uh, with a treaties of architecture from the 19th century, from uh, or like Vitruvius treaties. It's like to rethink about the element of architecture, like uh, in the in this 19th century treaties, it was like the columns, the stairs, the window, the the uh, the room was the element of architecture. And, and so I change this solid element to a more uh, invisible element like air, light, heat that become that could become the new element of architecture, a new uh, the new uh, subject of architecture. And um, then when we have this element uh, like a column in the solid uh, 19th century vision, uh, if we have air like one element. How to compose this? Uh, during the 19th century, there is some uh, composition principle like, com uh, like addition, multiplication, inclusion, uh, symmetry, asymmetry, that was principle to compose with this element to do a kind of building. And uh, 
here um, we, we, we could say that maybe we could find in the meteorological uh, um, uh, world the way to compose, to do a composition with this element, like, like uh, to use like um, um, meteorological phenomena like convection, evaporation, conduction, pressure, or ra radiation, like the the verbs of the of the of um, to create architecture. So we have element, we have subject like air, and we have. Um, um, verbs to cre that create shape and create form in the of the building. So um, here it's a presentation. Uh, uh, for this lecture, I would like to present more widely uh, the project we have won in Taiwan. Uh, and uh, but maybe first, I would like to show four projects that sh uh, that show how um, I deal with this uh, idea to use some uh, meteorological phenomena uh, to create the design of the architecture. Maybe there is one idea, is a little to reverse the uh, order of composition, because uh, if you think in the Sullivan uh, functionalism uh, sentence, like uh, uh, form follow function, and after there is a critique of the postmodern period, like uh, function follow form, and uh, maybe today, uh, because when it was like this, the, the climate came after. It was uh, the architect only maybe designed the, sh the form and the function, and after the engineer came, come and uh, do the climate inside by introducing a radiator or air conditioning. And but maybe we could reverse a little this uh, order and say that maybe form and function follow climate. So it's uh, to use the climatic. Um, um, element like uh, uh, the, as a former uh, base of the architecture and then to discover a form and then to discover a function. And so this is uh, some, uh, some project I, I made uh, based on convection uh, using like a, uh, asymmetry, thermal asymmetry, like introducing some cold and warm uh, a platform at different eyes that create uh, movement in the air, like that create current, like Gulf Stream or like convective flow in the air. And I just want uh, so this is a, the, this kind of project. Another uh, element of composition is uh, evaporation. So how to use the vapor, uh, the 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 way to to deal with the vapor and uh, with the air renewal inside the building, or to use conduction as also uh, at, the, at the base of the design, or, or to use pressure uh, to design the, the building, and radiation as another element. So, um, here, I, I just want to introduce a first uh, project based on the convection. It's a pro it's a, I, I did uh, um, maybe a 10 or project based on convection. I just want to show this project. Maybe it's not the best, it's a, but it's a, it's, a, the, um, it's a project for a young uh, doctor in Lyon. We have realized uh, last year, and it contains some different ideas. The, the first idea is, uh, of course, this idea to work with uh, uh, heat or to work with uh, convection or to work with climatic condition. I think it's, of course, linked with sustainability because sustainability requires to, uh, um, to reduce the consumption of energy, to, uh, to do a, a better way to use the air renewal or to have a better insulation. So, uh, of course, the the sustainability um, uh, on, in the building uh, techniques uh, um, oriented the, cons the, the construction into this uh, climatic uh, um, ID. And here, this is some uh, Swiss uh, recommendation like uh, uh, to economize energy. And it's, uh, of course, the, the goal of this is to reduce the energy, to reduce the uh, green gas effect, and to reduce uh, climate change. And, um, and in this uh, recommendation, 
uh, it's, uh, um, it shows that depending of your body activities or depending of your clothes, you could warm the space at different high, at different temperatures. So it means the corridor could be at 15 degrees Celsius because you are walking in the corridor and you don't have time to become cold. And you're, uh, because you are moving with the body, you create your own uh, temperature. So it could be, you could heat um, the corridor only at 15 degrees Celsius. And after the bedroom, you are inside the blanket, so it could be 16 degrees Celsius. And then it's the kitchen at 18, because you are cooking, moving a little. And then the living room at 20, because, because you are motionless uh, in the sofa. So uh, if it is two, 18, maybe after two minutes, you become uh, five minutes, you become cold. So, and bathroom, you are naked at, uh, with maybe some water on the skin. So 22 it is better. So this is not my uh, data. This is some Swiss recommendation. It's just the idea if all the bedrooms are warm only at 16 degrees Celsius and not at 20, you will economize 4 degrees in each bedroom in the Switzerland, in Switzerland and in Europe. And, in, and then uh, you will economize at the end of the day a lot of oil and, uh, and reduce the green gas um, um, uh, distribution. So, but when you are thinking as an architect what it means this, it means that uh, you could no more, at its, in reality, it destroy the, um, the composition of the space from the 20th century. Because uh, if you think what may be one of the most important things of the 20th century, of course, is the open, open plan, is the plan libre of Le Corbusier or the open space of Miss van der Rohe, it means that all the plans are together, and there is no more room and door and corridor. It's just uh, one space with different modulation of, uh, of partition that creates a space. And here, with this regul uh, regulation, you could no more have this, because you need to close the door. Because if you keep the door open between the bathroom and the bedroom, uh, at the bathroom will be at 22, the bedroom at 16. So like cold water and warm water, everything will uh, become at 20, and then uh, at the end it's too cold in the, in the bathroom, so it will be 22 everywhere in the house. So it means you have to come back to a kind of 19th century typology of uh, housing with, with room and door, uh, where you need to close the door after, and you could no more have this open space. So it's a problem for an architect because it's uh, like going back to the 19th century. So maybe we could find a solution to avoid this uh, uh, regression, uh, this um, coming back to the past. The second, uh, um, the second element is uh, Archimedes' law. It shows that the warm air go up and the cold air go down because of the density of the molecule of air. And um, and from this, uh, this if you match these two ideas, you you understand that this is. Uh, a radiator here, yeah, a traditional radiator, when you turn the, the, the warm air, when you turn the radiator on, it becomes very warm under the ceiling and it stays cold under the, on the foot level. So it means that um, if you do a kind of uh, analyze of, the, of a section, you will find some cold area here and some uh, warmer area here. And there is already, because it's, uh, it could be a very big difference of temperature. It could be like uh, uh, 20 degree here and 26 here. So there is already something that exists. And in this project, it's just to, uh, to, to use to the natural convection, the natural way that the natural um, um, moving of warm air until, until uh, under the sailing, to, and to apply here, the function inside this space, so it means that the bedroom will go here in the, at 16 degrees Celsius, the kitchen will go here at 18, the, uh, the living room will come here at uh, 20, and the bathroom will come here at uh, 22. So you use the natural uh, stratification of the air to uh, place uh, the object. So it's uh, what we, we did for this apartment, uh, so it just the, you could see that the sofa, 
the canopy starts to raise inside the space and this, where you are too, it's a little lower than when, when you are alone. And, uh, and the, the, the shower, it's at the top, at the top of, the, of the space here and the kitchen here and the, and the, and the bedroom go down. After, we use another element, but we, I will show it later. Also, it's uh, the migration of the vapor. So we create a more dry area and the uh, migration of vapor from to a more uh, uh, humid area. And here you could see that we, we place in the same area the kitchen and the, and the bath um, and the shower that arrive in this... Uh, uh, in this um, uh, humid area. So it means that the function, we didn't really choose the function to choose where we have to, we, we didn't do the house like private and public or like uh, day and night. It's really the, we first uh, designed the, the, the atmosphere, we, we first designed the migration of the air, the, the convection of the air, and then we place the program inside following the different climate in the house. So this is some uh, image. It's quite white. Maybe you see nothing. <laughs> okay. I think we see quite nothing. So, so um, now I would like to introduce a, a second element of uh, composition evaporation. And uh, here, also, we start to study the physiology of the body because uh, ventilation is, is um, um, the moisture, uh, the ventilation, why we have a ventilation like uh, here, it's linked, the first reason of the ventilation is uh, because when we breathe, we produce uh, vapor and, and uh, we need to change this air. This is the first reason. And after, we have to, of course, bring some new oxygen and to change uh, the smell. But uh, the first reason is because of this uh, production of vapor when we breathe, we, have, we lose a lot of water in the air and we breathe and we produce on it. And uh, so after one moment, uh, depending on the number of people in the, in the room, the size of the volume of the room, uh, you reach the saturation curve. So it means that the air at a certain temperature could no more accept more water and so it creates a condensation and for the building it also creates some mushroom or some problem for the construction. And, uh, and in the sustainability uh, requirement, we also have to, to deal with this uh, question of ventilation because if you, depending of, um, of uh, the quantity of air you, um, when you are inside the space, you don't, uh, if you want to economize the, uh, the heat, you have to think how many uh, liter of air you have to renew depending on the number of people. So it means, because if you open the window freely, maybe there is too many cold air that arrive and then you have to turn on the radiator more to warm, but maybe you don't need to change uh, uh, so many liter of air. So you could only bring a few quantity of air depending on the activity and the, and the number of people inside the space. This is what we are doing uh, today in, um, with the air renewal and double flow um, um, uh, system. And um, so linked to this, uh, you could see that uh, depending on your activity, if you are sleeping, you produce 40 grams of vapor during one hour. If you are in a normal uh, position, you produce 150 grams during one hour. If you use the kitchen, you produce 500 in 20 minutes, and if you use a bathroom, uh, you produce 800 grams in 20 minutes. So it means that this is a system of uh, uh, 
um, of this double flow. Uh, um, this is the new technique for sustainability. So it means that uh, if you, uh, depending of how many people there is here, so you would take the, a certain quantity of air and then it go inside the, the room and it's warmed by radiator and it go out and before going out there is a heat exchanger and so you could uh, eat the cold air that arrive inside the inside the building. So it means that we have to calculate how many uh, liter of air we will introduce in the uh, in the in the house uh, depending of uh, the number of people. And there is something another thing that is interesting that when you bring uh, some uh, new air you will bring, depending on what I sh just show, in first in, in the bedroom, because you are producing less vapor in the bedroom, only for, uh, 40 grams, and then this air go to the living room, and then it go to the toilet or bathroom or kitchen. So it creates a kind of invisible wind uh, traveling inside the house from dry area to more uh, humid area. And this is quite interesting because it's uh, it's a, um, it's a new type. If you analyze this not uh, as a schematic growing, but uh, like a type, uh, um, you, uh, it's not public and private, but it's become like dry and humid. So it's create a kind of, uh, a kind of uh, moisture landscape inside the house. So uh, according to this, we, we did a, a project in Germany, uh, and we uh, design the, the the building according to the movement of the of the water. So it means the the warm the dry the new air arrives there and it's blow inside the the space, and then there is a migration uh, because there is a, a pressure there and then there is a, a low pressure there, and and it come come back. Uh, at its, uh, the, this is the entry of uh, the air, this is the uh, exit of the air, of the exhaust air. And so you could map a kind of uh, moisture geography inside the building uh, between like dry area and humid area or like a desertic area inside the house and, uh, and more uh, tropical area inside the house. And then uh, following this map of uh, moisture, you could introduce a program following the climate, so it means that all the bedroom will arrive, will be more there, and then it's become the, the, the living room and the kitchen and the bathroom. So, the, the, if you, so it's a reverse way to, to design the, and to find the shape and the program of the building by first designing the movement of the humidity inside the air, inside the building, and then uh, to find the, the function of the, um, inside the space following the climate. And uh, this is an image of this project, and we could see because of the, 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 the humid air is more light than the, the dry air, so there is also something that happened in the section uh, following this, uh, this uh, flow of, um, of air. Here, an another project uh, on conduction. Uh, it's um, a project for the uh, sport hall. And here, this is uh, the, I, I, I just showed before this machine, this heat exchanger, for this uh, air double flow air renewal, when you take the air from the outside and you bring it inside and then it go out, but bef before going out, there is a heat exchanger, so it's warm the air, the cold air that come inside the house or inside the building. And here, the, the idea is to um, change the scale of this machine to say that th this machine is not only an object, it could be the building itself becomes this machine. And uh, uh, so in this project, we have the flow of air, of uh, cold air that arrive in the, in the building, and then it's warm with a radiator inside the sport hall, and then it go out uh, um, here. And and so there, there is uh, some colder area and some more warmer area, and here uh, some more warmer, and it's become colder. And following the function, the activity, so here it could be storage, here it will be the spot hall, here it will be where it's the most warm, it will be the shower and the, uh, and the restroom, and then it go out. 
And to do this, we, we take the same techniques and um, heat exchanger. So it means that everything, this wall are very well insulated with, with a very big insulation, but the, uh, the wall in between the input of air and the output of air is a steel, uh, it's a conductive material, so it means that the cold, the warm air will, will uh, touch the, the, the steel and by conduction warm the air that arrives inside. So it means that all the, the, the building become like a heat changer um, in the, uh, to, and the design follows this uh, heat exchange. Uh, Uh, last project uh, is on the pressure. Here, it's also to, uh, to use the, the, um, the flow of air and to start to design the flow of air and then to find some space according to the flow of air. And um, here, this is some recommendation of, uh, of air renewal, for example, if you are, uh, this is for a library, it was in Nancy, uh, for a competition for the for um, uh, library, for a university, and um, so um, so a book storage maybe need three times air. You need to change the air three times during one hour, but a reading space maybe 15 times, and a hall only seven times. So it's a, depending of the activity, you are, you need to change the air more often or less often, and so maybe it's not so clear here. Maybe it's. But uh, it means that we, we start to design as a flow of air, so like a river of air, and uh, depending of the, we have a kind of mainstream of air, and if you create some pocket, like in a river, when you have a river, and you create a, a small uh, pocket uh, in the river, so the, the flow will be a little slower there and more quick there, and so you could, start to design the flow so the main flow arrives there and go there but here we create some like in a river some we um, we enlarge here and we create like more slower uh, uh, place of air and here we have a air renewal of 7000 uh, cubic meter by hour and like here only 600 cubic meter by air but not by doing partition, not by closing door or by uh, separating, but just by placing and by designing the shape of uh, the building in order to let the, that the air will go there and not a little quantity of air will go in the corner of the building. So it means according to this, this is the space where all the reading room uh, will be, all the people will be there, and the storage go into a more... Um, uh, into area where the slow f the speed of air will be slower, and in the same uh, in the, for the heat we we have the same strategy. So uh, it will be more cold here because we don't need to to warm to heat the book, and uh, this is uh, where the people are. So by by uh, the warm air go up there, and so it means that in this area the flow of air will be more speed and the temperature will be more speed here, and when you go down, there is a, the temperature is, slow, is lower and the speed of air is slower. So it means that all the design of the building uh, is linked to this, uh, to, to design the, the flow of air between the, uh, the introduction of the new air and the exhaust of the, of the air. So, it's, uh, so it means, for example, here it will be slower and more quick here, the air, so it's everything is following this, uh, uh, the, the quantity of air. Um. So th this, uh, this was a kind of introduction of uh, kind of language to use some um, meteorological phenomena at the background of the design and then to, to find the form and the function following the uh, meteorological phenomena. Here I, I would like to present this project we have won uh, two years ago for the, in Taichung. It was, a, um, it was a, a, an old airport and Stan Allen from uh, 
the American architect has won the, the master plan of this 250 hectare area. So that it's a, it will be um, uh, commercial building and university and uh, business building and cultural building there. And in his project, he have a kind of uh, big central park, a kind of uh, uh, um, a long park in the middle of this new uh, district. And so the first competition was this park because it's a public. Uh, this is a public government of Taichung that uh, is uh, building it. And then, um, so we have won two years ago this project. We um, we have signed the, the contract two years ago, and then and, and today we have finished uh, uh, the, all the um, drawing, and uh, it's now on the tender, and uh, the tender will finish in the in two months, and the construction will start in uh, in January, this January. So everything is finished now from the for the design, and the, the construction will end uh, uh, in July 2015, and then uh, Su Fujimoto will start to build his big triangle uh, tower there, and uh, Sejima Sana have just won a competition for a library on the north of the park. So it's, uh, it will be, in, uh, the construction will start in 2015, 15 when our park will be finished and um, so when I I, um, I start to think about this project uh, why we need to do a park what is the reason to do a park I um, I came back to uh, to read some uh, 19th century uh, invention of the urban park like uh, Olmsted in Central Park or like uh, Alphon in Paris uh, with Haussmann in, during the 19th century in, uh, for the Bois de Boulogne or the Butte Chaumont or uh, some other uh, landscape uh, intervention in Paris. And it's, it was quite interesting to read their memories because you see that, for example, for Olmsted in uh, Central Park, the first reason why he, um, he, he did a park was about the health of the New Yorker. He wrote in his memory, he's happy because the health of the New Yorker are better, is better today than before the park. And, um, and so this is really this idea of green lung uh, in, uh, in New York. And if you read Alphon, uh, also the first sentence when he explained why he built a park and also what he had some trees in, um, in, in, on the boulevard, there is some trees on the boulevard. It was not a romantic idea to bring uh, nature into the city or to bring uh, green into the gray or to bring uh, uh, some, something, but it was really like the trees like, was like a device to create shadow and to cool the surface under. And it was for the horses during the 19th century on the street, in the, in, on the boulevard in Paris, because during the summer it was very hot with a, with a granitic stone. And uh, so they have this idea to introduce uh, trees to cool the street of Paris with this. So for me, it was quite interesting to, to think that the park was like a climatic machine or like a health machine or something like. Um, and, um, and it was also maybe uh, quite interesting in Taiwan because when I spoke with some young people in Taiwan about to, to do a competition for a park, uh, um, um, a girl from Taiwan told me, but me, I, I hate park, I never go into a park, there is too many mosquitoes, it's humid, I prefer to go in shopping mall. And uh, so, uh, so it was, um, so, I, 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 so I, I, I tried to came back to this um, idea that a park is a kind of a space where you could maybe during the summer f f find freshness uh, out from the air conditioning machine or out of, uh, of the interior uh, space. And then, uh, and then this is the idea to go outside but to feel fresh. And, um, and so it's what we did for this project. It was to, to, um, to say that the, 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 the target of this part will be to uh, create the atmosphere, to modify the atmosphere, to find some uh, good place with comfortable place. And uh, for doing this, of course, in Taiwan, it's a warm and humid and polluted uh, um, area in Taichung. And uh, so we, we start to work on, on, this, on these three layers, so the heat layer, 
the humidity layer and the pollution layer, and we start to mitigate or to deal with this, but not like uh, not with the idea that we will change all the climate and create a comfortable uh, climate everywhere because it's quite impossible and we don't want to do it, but by finding already uh, by a natural way where it could be a little uh, colder. So we work with um, someone of the school, with uh, Matthias Schuller from uh, Transolar, and uh, to, uh, to do uh, the model of uh, the future of, the, uh, of this uh, district, and, uh, and to find where it will be a little more cold. And of course, as um, if you are in the school, I'm sure that you know that the, to the perception of the temperature, if you feel it's cold or warm, it's linked to temperature of the air, humidity of the air, uh, velocity of the air, uh, direct radiation, uh, op op um, uh, light uh, opening of the sky. And uh, so one factor that we could use here was the cold wind that come from the north. And we could see that there is some area where the wind will be uh, more uh, quick there. Uh, it goes faster here and where, uh, in the red and yellow part, and it go more slower in the blue part. So this is a model we, we have made. And then from this, we, we did the, the composition, the first composition layer of the park by not by using outline, uh, contour line, but by using gradation line. So it means it will be uh, more intense here, and it decrease, and it become uh, lower, and it re-increase there. And um, so it means that here it will be w w colder, and a little uh, less cold, and more warmer, and very warm here. And uh, so it was this, from this uh, first map, we materialized this first map, uh, by increasing the existing quality. So it means where it's already colder, we increase the coldness by adding climatic devices that will reinforce the, cold, uh, the coldness. And where it's warm, we let it warm by, uh, without doing anything. So it means that from this map, we create by dots uh, this uh, second map. And for, for, to materialize, materialize uh, this, um, this map, we have invented what we call climatic devices. So it could be trees. Uh, this is, a, the, the, this is a, the trees that will reinforce the, the cool uh, feeling there by... Um, by, uh, uh, by, by uh, augmenting the density of the trees. So it will it mean that where it's already a little cold, we put a lot of trees, and so it will become colder with the trees because of the shadow. And, uh, and for this, we use some specific trees that create some, that have big leaf or a, a heavy, a big, a lot of leaf, or white leaf that reflect the heat. So we choose specific species uh, of uh, trees that have the capacity to cool the space under it. So, uh, so it, it's a, a specific choice of trees to create this first map. And then we um, reinforce this with uh, artificial climatic devices. And it is a little like in the history of park, if you think what is a, a fountain, like in Spain, uh, you come near a fountain, you feel the freshness because there is this evaporating phenomena, the, the, the changing of phase from liquid to gas that takes the energy from outside, from the air, and so it creates a cold area under, near the, the fountain. Or it, like a kiosk or like a pavilion that creates shadow, and, uh, uh, or like a grotto where it's cold. So you could think that all the elements of the park are climatic devices. Uh, it's, a, uh, it's all machine to, uh, to create more uh, freshness in the park. So we, have, we, we did the same. So we, this is all the artificial climatic devices that use all different uh, techniques of radiation, conduction, uh, evaporation, convection to create freshness, uh, to create coolness around them. And, and so this creates a first layer. And then following this, 
all the black dots here are all the leisure activities that came after and find place uh, in the coldest uh, area. So this is the first layer. The second layer is the humidity layer. Uh, we have uh, uh, the sea is there, and so there is a, um, a wind that brings some humid air, but also the park have to deal and to manage all the rainwater from all the district. And uh, so we could map also where it will be more wet and more dry in the park, where the air will be more wet and more dry. And uh, so here it will be a little more dry and here more uh, humid. So where it's already a little more, humid, uh, more dry, we increase this quality of dryness by adding a lot of trees uh, that uh, will catch the humidity of the air. This is some trees that have floating roots that are, catch some uh, the, 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 the vapor of the, of the air. And also, we have, all, uh, we have a, uh, a list of uh, artificial uh, climatic devices that we call drying devices that will uh, reduce uh, the vapor in the air, but also uh, protect from the rain or protect from the flood. So this is all the uh, this is all the artificial devices here, and here, according to this uh, dry area, we have placed all the, um, the, the dry activities, so uh, the sport activity, because when you are doing sport, you have a, a perspiration, and of course it's better to have a perspiration when it's more dry, because it, you could use it as a thermoregulation uh, uh, um, uh, for cooling the body during the sport activities. And the last map is a pollution map. We have some big street that uh, goes through the park with eight way of uh, uh, car. And so from uh, far from this street, in this uh, black area, it will be a little less polluted. The air will be less polluted, far from the street. And then we create this uh, map by adding a lot of trees that will catch the pollution of the air because they have airy leaf or because some different properties of some trees that absorb some gas pollution or some particle matter pollution and, uh, and also some sound, pollu sound uh, noise um, also because they have a big uh, trunk and a uh, porous trunk. And so we have all the list of uh, trees that will uh, uh, deal with uh, pollution and uh, noise. And we have here all the artificial climatic devices that will clean the air uh, by, or, um, by um, using different techniques. And all the children and uh, family activity find place in this uh, more cleaner area in the park. And the idea of, uh, th so this three map create the composition of the park. So it's, uh, we, the composition is directly coming from this uh, mapping of the, of the three parameters, from uh, the heat, the humidity, and the pollution. And something very important for me is that um, it's, it's, uh, by overlapping, it creates some uh, different um, uh, situations. So it means that it could be cold, dry, and polluted, but it could be cold, dry, and uh, clean, or it could be uh, uh, dry, uh, warm, and so it creates different uh, quality in the park. So for example, here it's clean, dry, and uh, cold, but here it will be uh, only dry, but still warm. So it means that it uh, creates different uh, uh, quality in the park, and everybody is free to go where he wants. You know, if you want to go in a warm area, you could go there. If it is noon, maybe it will be better to be in the forest very, where it's very dense and very cold. But maybe at 4 p.m., if there is a lot of cloud, it will be better to be here. So it means that we don't create an homogeneous uh, uh, park with a, uh, an homogeneous climate in the park, we, but we create a lot of different um, 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 spaces with different quality. Uh, yeah, I will just show um, so it's a little. Uh, 
Okay, okay, it's good. Ten minutes. So, yeah, I, I would like to show some uh, different uh, devices we have uh, made for the, for the project. Uh, this, is, uh, this is a list of uh, the cooling devices. So this is some uh, devices that will uh, blow by using convection, uh, blowing some cold air. So we use only uh, green techniques. So it means that the, um, we, we will use some underground uh, duct and the, the, the temperature of the ground at under five meter will be um, lower during all the year. So we could cool the air there and then it it's, uh, go out. Also, this is a model we have made with Transolar to see what, kind, what will be the speed of the air, the quantity of air, the, in, 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 the um, efficiency, and the area we could uh, reach depending at the different moment of the, of the day. And so this is something that use uh, um, that blow cold air. This is uh, the same technique we call this underground breeze. This is something that uses uh, evaporation, so it will be water that will fall there, so it creates a kind of artificial rain sometimes that will cool the area uh, by evaporation under it. This is a kind of simple fountain. This is uh, some cloud. We have different uh, type of cloud, so it will create a mist of, uh, of uh, water uh, and by evaporation, it will cool the space around and also create a kind of uh, small shadow. So this is a cirrus cloud. This is a stratus cloud at different high. And this is a cumulus cloud that will be at, a, at a 14 meter high. And we have one, uh, 400 of these devices. Um, We have some other, other devices that use radiation, so we will use, uh, uh, we will cool water uh, underground, it's, uh, and this water will run into a cylinder, a black cylinder of steel, and so it creates a cold radiation, so you could arrive and touch it, and it will be colder. When it will be 35 degrees outside, it will be like 25 there, so you could feel very strongly the different. This is some uh, shadow, so this is uh, what we call um, a heavy shadow or floating rock. So it's uh, it's um, it's a very um, uh, um, insulated material. So it means that it creates a shadow, but without transmission of heat of uh, from the top of the device to the bottom. So it's uh, it will be not irradiate. Uh, uh, heat under it. This is something. This is some filter. We know that uh, we we have discovered that the the depending of the wavelength of the light, uh, the um, violet light is a less uh, heat heating one because the, the violet go lower uh, through the skin than the red one, and uh, so it means that with the violet. If we let only the violet one, it, it's a less charge of heat of the light. So this is kind of different filters that fill first the infrared that, compo that take 50% of the heat. That, uh, and then the different uh, uh, wavelengths to reach the violet. And this is a solar chimney. So we have uh, different devices like this. And this is a climatic plan, so it's meant for we have worked a lot with the client to find a solution for maintenance, for, uh, for to to guarantee that everything go well without uh, and flood problem. And so it's uh, um, this is the so. Um, This is the drying devices. So this is what we call a dry cloud. So it will be 
we will take the air and it will go through uh, some silica gel bag. So it's, it will be a premiere of this one because we have worked with the engineer to to develop this. But so it will. It means the silica gel bag. You know, it when you buy a computer, you have this small bag, and here it will be a big scale bag, and it goes. The air goes through during 30 minutes, and so they take the the the, the water of the air, and then uh, after you need to to cool but to dry it by uh, by um, using warm uh, water inside warm uh, and then so it will be uh, we, we are developing this technique for this so it will blow some uh, dry area of air and just to explain uh, something important all the we don't use oil energy to do it we don't use uh, nuclear energy to do it we only use uh, um, a, a photovoltaic panel for the fan, but all the technique to cool or to dry are passive ones. So it means we don't use electricity to cool the. It's only by going under underground by uh, blowing in the silica gel bag. So it's uh, um, so it's the electricity is only for fan for moving the um, the air. So this is some different devices. This is a flood protection. This is some water protection. And the last uh, uh, a de a device are the depolluting devices. So it's uh, this is what we call ozone eclipse. So it will be uh, we will blow air without uh, gas pollution. So there is some filter, and so it will blow some some air without pollution. And uh, there is this uh, pre-industrial drove, so it's uh, air with particle matter PM2.5, PM10 filter, so it means it will blow uh, air without uh, particle matter pollution, and, uh, and so we have a, a lot of different types of these uh, devices. Now, um, I just want to show also quickly the, we have a few buildings inside that we are designing. This is a visitor center. Um, and we call this uh, Meteorium. And in this Meteorium, it will be three space. Uh, it will be a cafe, uh, but also a visitor information center. And also three space that each focus on one uh, climate. So it will be, a, this is a cold uh, climate. This is a dr the dry climate. This is a clean climate. And um, so all the building is made according to this, uh, o o to manage this. So it means there is a waterproof uh, protection, the thermal protection. So everything is dissociated. So we manage, we deal with all the different role of the wall to 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 deal with the climate. And this is a coolium. So the coolium will be a space where you could, when you go inside in Taishung, you will feel the temperature of the mountain in real time uh, during the, the year. So it will be a cold spaces when you go inside. It will be, and uh, it, this is a Jane mountain, so there is also snow on this mountain. And it will be a little like the work I did uh, for the Biennale in 2002. Uh, the second one will be the, the dry -um. So it will be a space that reproduce uh, always the 21 of November uh, because this is the most dry day in Taishung. So it's maybe one of the most comfortable. It's why the tourist office say it's better to visit this country during uh, in autumn because it's less charge of uh, humidity. So uh, here we reproduce uh, like an endless um, uh, 21 of November and. Uh, and so we, you will feel the like it's a repeating thing, uh, 21 of November with the light and uh, with the temperature and the humidity of the 21 of, the, of November. And the last one is the clearium. And here we will uh, provide a space where we uh, remove all the pollution of the industrial, uh, uh, so it will be like a pre-industrial uh, climate, uh, like in 1832. And what, uh, so it will blow air without pollution, of, without industrial pollution, but also it will create more cloud, but because we know today that uh, with the global warming, the cloud will be less important in the sky because the uh, leaf 
uh, will get more, less evaporation because the, the, the temperature will go higher and then the, the cell of the leaf uh, close them and so it's why we could study uh, we could see that the the, the quantity of cloud will, will be reduced with the global warming this is the last study about uh, cloud formation linked to global warming and this is all the detail of every layer, because you have, uh, we have the temperature layer, the, uh, the water layer, and that going, and sometimes, uh, sometimes they, they, they are dilated. And I will finish with an uh, with intelligent uh, park. So, uh, we have, uh, in the park, we we have every 50 meter a sensor that measure in real time the temperature, the humidity, all the pollution, the noise, and give information to the computer. And the computer will, uh, will uh, uh, first, depending on the quantity of light we have, we will first light for buying during the night uh, for the lighting for the park. But when we have finished this uh, first mission, we will use the quantity of uh, electricity we have in real time for. Uh, for the devices, and so it means that it will uh, one or two or four devices or 100 devices will be on depending of the quantity of light we have in real time. And um, so we have created an index of uh, heat and humidity and pollution. And um, so in real time, you could see where it will be more dry or more humid in the park, and um, and where what is the amount of pollution inside. And this is uh, an example of uh, we have this quantity of electricity in real time. So first we sell, we use it for the building and the lightning, and then we have this. Then and we could have this one with this one on on all these devices on depending of this. And there is a smartphone application that means that you could go in real time in the park and see. Uh, what um, what will be uh, you are there and you could go, uh, see where it will be a little colder or warmer and you could decide where you want to go in real time and move to to some drier or less polluted area and you will get also some information as the devices and and here are some image of the project. And this is a visitor center with a three meteorium. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I have a few minutes for questions. Yes, okay. So we are all very keen on the beer and dogs, but um, I think we have a few minutes if uh, people have some uh, uh, questions to, to ask Philippe. I could just start by asking one quick question. I, I, I know that at the beginning, I was talking about the fact that uh, there's the emphasis on you know, the atmosphere and doing things with vapor. But it's interesting that I'd like to ask you about the status of drawing in the work. Because some of the drawings at the beginning, Philippe, are so faint. And you're using this idea of, of do, making the drawing to almost make the, the, the drawing appear like atmosphere. But in the process, it disappears in a way. And uh, I, I'm, I'm just wondering whether that's something that's deliberate, because then when you do the park, you're going more like construction drawing, and not uh, then gathering until the very end this idea of what the park actually looks like. Because despite all these atmospheres, it still has an appearance. And so what is the status of how things look like in the context of your interest in the atmosphere of things? Because surely atmospheric things also have an appearance. Uh, 
No, I think the the, the choice of the um, of the form or the appearance of the of the things also uh, change a lot during the design process. For example, the, because we for the pipe we use, you know, all the dimension of the pipe. We start with some certain dimension, but it was wrong, and so it become bigger and a small change. So a lot of things uh, are um, following a process of uh, of different. Um, Quantity that give uh, a kind of uh, information about uh, about the design, and uh, after uh, after I think of course also the choice of the material if it is white or if we if it is black or what what the choice of the material is also linked with the reverberation with the, uh, if it absorbs the, the light it transform it into heat or if it reflect so uh, we try. Uh, the most to 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 choose a material and a shape according to this uh, to the reflection absorption. Yeah, to but the my question is, how do you test that? Because uh, when you make the drawings, you are emphasizing almost like construction drawings. So you separate the elements. So yeah. the cooling element or the drying element, yeah. they're all presented <clears throat> as working drawings. Yeah. But I'm asking you, how do you actually um, deal? with how these things appear, and then how do you deal with their adjacency, like the juxtaposition of cooling and heating in the park? It still has a visual dimension that it makes the park look like a park, because how do you know that what you're doing, the totality, is not just going to be too many elements or too few elements or the, the inappropriate combination of colorations or tonalities yeah. or things like that? Um. We we have stopped with one dimension. For, for example, where it's the most dense, it will be all the trees will be uh, separate from one meter fifty, mm -hmm. and uh, so it will be. Uh, and then it become every three meter and every six meter, and so uh, and this is the the, the the denser area will be one meter fifty. So we know, we we could we know that it will be a where it will be very dense. It's look it will be a little like a forest, you know, full of trees. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you will get one devices inside. So it's uh, uh, for for me. Uh, I don't know if you if you you know when we were designing this uh, this. Uh, sometime I, I remember uh, I like this idea that you could be in a completely natural environment. So you will be, it will be full of streets, but you will have one machine there. So it will create a kind of very. Uh, uh, um, special uh, atmosphere, uh, yeah, special uh, uh, appearance of uh, because it will be a mix of natural element and artificial element. Uh, I don't know if it is exactly your question, but uh, I can yeah, I can okay. continue. But maybe other people <laughs> will, have, uh, um, will have Sanford. Do you have a hello? Question? Um, back here. Hello, Philippe. Uh, hello. Hello, Philippe. There was a famous essay by. Um, uh, Karl Popper about 50 years ago, I'm sure you know it, uh, the one on clouds and clocks, um, in which he essentially argues that not only science but the social sciences and everyone has coming to terms with the fact that the world resembles more a cloud than it does a clock. Um, how would you respond to the claim that you are designing clouds using clock, uh, clock, who? In terms also, I mean, just to guide you a bit in case you've forgotten that essay, in terms of the way in which variables interact, the way the world is seen as an essentially open system where predictability, causality, et cetera, is subject to entirely different sets of relations where, in fact, what you set up situations which are clearly understood to be cloud phenomena, but then you tend to, in a way, try to master the interrelations with just simply one or two variables and expect the park or the room or the building uh, to essentially follow very predictable relationships. Ha. Can you hear? Did you hear? Yes, yes. No, um, I think it's... Uh, um, 
You know, you know, it was also interesting in the discussion of the, with the client also because for for uh, for me when we use for example the the model we made with the Transolar, it was like a, the starting point of the design. So it's a it's a first uh, background of something, and then uh, it means that after the 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 uh, it it creates some different uh, quality at different place, and uh, also depending of what will happen, you know, if it is for uh, in the summer or for the, or noon during the winter, it will create some different uh, uh, quality. So um, for me, it's uh, something very uh, important that we are uh, creating a lot of diversity of, uh, of climate and of, uh, of atmosphere inside the park. And everybody are free, depending on the free will, to go somewhere and to choose. So. So, um, uh, so this is, uh, the, I think, like uh, as a designer, you know, we, we keep this uh, critical thinking that we must create multiplicity, diversity, alterity. So we have a lot of different quality everywhere in the park. And so everybody are, are free to, to, to go um, in different, um, in different uh, places. And uh, yes. Um, uh, in the back Somebody here. Somebody else has a mic somewhere. Yes, right that? here in the right. back. Okay, so let's Can go. See. Let's go. Um, okay. I'm interested, or I'd like to ask you about how you make the leap from a climactic condition. Can you to, can you speak up, please? I'd like to ask you about how you make the leap from a climactic condition to a specific function or program. Um, in the early projects, you use Swiss standards to specify where a bathroom would be, um, but if Form and function follow climate, and climate follows a Swiss standard. Um, <laughs> it, it, does that present a problem? And if if not, like how do you um, make the or bridge the gap between a uh, climate and a function, except by a standard? I didn't understand the end of the so, question. So um, he's asking. I, I I won't do justice to your question, but he's asking that. Um, if you are arguing for form following climate, but your, your vision of climate is Swiss standards, uh, isn't that some kind of a problematic that, that the consequences of that kind of sense of what climate means is relatively limited? Yeah. I mean, in a sense, I think your question also relates to the, to the concept of categorization, because you have the categories within the apartment of the bathroom, bedroom, living room, and so on. In the park, you have the categorization of dry, wet, humid, and so on. And I think part of it is that when you make categories, there's also still a sense of wholeness. Mm -hmm. Like there are categories of things, and there's still a park. There are categories of rooms, but there's still a, an apartment building. So you still have a responsibility to describing this sense of what may be the constitutive element of the thing that's, in a way, Potentially semi-independent of the of the categorization. I, I mean, I think that's yeah. so. So what I think, I, 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 and this is my yeah, problem yeah. in a way, not seeing the park in the end because I don't see the park in terms of the totality of a park because I have to always see these are chapters in a book, mm -hmm. and so I am now dealing with the chapter on dryness, or I'm now dealing with the chapter on whiteness, wetness, but I'm still looking for the park. So yeah. where is the park? No, uh, of course, I, I think uh, uh, I, I have different ans answer about this. Uh, uh, first, uh, I think, um, of course, I, I'm um, personally uh, interesting to um, to come from the microscopic and to go to uh, the, the big scale. And I think the it's why uh, um, very often we use like a little like a impressionist painting, you know, like a Claude Monet or. Sera, you know, we use some uh, kind of uh, uh, microscopic things that will create a wall, but first it starts from a, a kind of uh, microscopic uh, way to design. And uh, I have no idea of, uh, you know, I'm not, I have no uh, an image of something at the beginning. Mm. I, and uh, I don't know what it will look like. I, I just doing a process and something happened. But what I want to say about Swiss uh, recommendation, I completely agree with you, and I'm completely against the idea that we need to 
um, to define um, uh, to define something uh, according to a category. So uh, it's a li little complicated to explain, but I think um, um, what I, I want to say that we, we, for example, in the park, uh, you know, there is, or in the apartment, at the end there is a lot of different uh, spaces, and uh, if you see all oh, this uh, young doctor is living, you know, he is he, living in a very uh, free way in this apartment, and he's absolutely not, uh, this, what we are doing as an architect is like a background of, uh, of what's happened after, you know. And the background is uh, like a climatic background, but that creates a variety of uh, conditions. It's why in the apartment, if you want to go in more colder or more warmer, you are free to go where you want at the end. You, it's just, uh, just to use this, um, to use this, uh, uh, to use the climate as element for designing, but not to go in a kind of modern way uh, to determine function and uh, place. I think it's like in the park, we, we, we use, we, we are designing something, but after, we uh, by overlapping the three layers, it will create different uh, uh, quality. You know, it will be cold and polluted and, uh, and dry. Or, so we don't have this, it's why it's not a modernist uh, vision. It's not, a, it's a kind, of, we continue the critical uh, thinking. So it means we are, we want to create uh, multiplicity, diversity of, uh, of quality, and we don't want to impose something. But we are just using this category to designing something that after everybody is free to, to interpret. So it's why there is not a, there is not a functionalist vision of what it has to be. Right? But I it, guess the point that is being made is that ultimately there is a functional dimension. And I think that was a little bit relates to what Sanford is, is saying, that when we talk about dryness, then we, de then we design a device for the, for the production of dryness or a device for the production of humidity. So those elements, we are thinking about the consequences of dryness or humidity, but at the same time, we're also dealing with the production of a thing a device for the making of that. And that has consequences. That has a visual uh, consequence, even though it's great that we are describing and discovering incredible things, mm -hmm. but nevertheless, there is a, there is a sort of visuality, mm -hmm. uh, not in terms of a, an idea of a pre-imagined yeah. sense, but ultimately when the thing is made. I think that's a little bit part of it. But Ali, you were... You were I, I think my questions were almost uh, asked, but uh, let me just ask it slightly different. The, the space that you're basically includes you hold the spaces. The, right. microphone close, yeah. um, the spaces that you're describing, they are enclosed spaces. What will happen when they are open? What kind of negotiations will it happen uh, between the space inside and the outside? It seems like it's enclosed, right? And it's almost like a refrigerator. Right. Then you have you have very precise zones when them uh, when you open a window, what will happen to these uh, environments? And it's related to the question of the overall question of sustainability, really reduction of energy in total, right? Um, You're not you, sure what no, this is. No, no, what you tell me. Um, I think maybe this is the question that we can have during the reception, uh, <coughs> when there'll be a more relaxed thing. I think that, that unless there are any other questions, I do want to say that uh, it's really great to have Philippe here. Uh, when you're trying to investigate and work on, on a new way of doing things, you really do have to work at them in ways that we, it's not obvious, it's not so clear, it's not so easily understandable. There is something to be said about the role of working drawings, as drawings that are about the making of things that can really discuss the way that they, they perform. One of the things that I think Philippe hasn't described enough is that some of these devices, the way that they're made, they will actually have very strange qualities about them. And this idea of the strangeness of these things, of these devices, and their effects, are themselves going to create a kind of magical garden. Mm -hmm. But this magical garden 
uh, still will have a certain perceptual qualities in a, as well as its performative qualities. And therefore, my only request is that when we get to that stage, we have to test the relationship between the performative and the perceptual, or the performative and the visual. And this is a dimension of the project that I think is, is evolving. It's in the process of testing. And I, I really hope that, that we will have a chance to, to discuss these things. And this is some of the things that, of course, we're interested in in the school. There is a student who is dying to say something. And I'm always happy for the students to have the last word. You have the last but, word, uh, and then we will. Just before, I, I just want to answer maybe to, do, to this uh, question. It's because it's a little complicated. Of, uh, the, the, the first is to say, you know, very often, because you are working on the climate, you know, uh, you are, for example, here, there is a precise temperature in this room. But because nobody is care about what is the temperature here, you know, nobody st start to say uh, what is the category of this uh, sure. hole. You know? But we also hide it. Yeah, yes. We so it means it it mean uh, if you are not focusing on something, someone else will do it. Sure. So why, why it is the engineer that have to decide? And you, as an architect, you are afraid to, uh, to affront sure. this uh, climate because you become like a categorist uh, sure, 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 sure. architect. So, sure. you, you know, so it's, we don't have to be afraid to, to, because it's not because you are dealing with the climate that you want to become more uh, categorist than if you are working with brick. You know, you, you could say if you are working with brick, you will build only jail. You know, uh, you are working with glass, you will build a democratic building. You know, it's 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 a it's a kind of uh, not coherent uh, way of thinking. So it's why it's not because you are working on the climate that you want to create category a Swiss category of uh, of way of living. So so yeah, yeah. So first, this is the first. The second answer is about the the aesthetics that arrive or the the, consequence, the plastic consequence. I I think. Personally, I'm uh, in a kind of modern tradition. I, I mean, I'm interested in uh, the music of uh, Claude Debussy, of uh, Webern, and, uh, the, the way that they, when they change the, you know, from note to tone, it creates a new perception of something that you never know before, and this creates a new aesthetic. It's the same with, uh, with uh, uh, the way of writing or with uh, Ligeti. In the music, it's quite... Uh, simple to understand with Ligeti or with uh, the spectral music from uh, the 17 in France with Gérard Griset. So it's, it's a way, a process that creates a new aesthetic. And after, you could, uh, you know, the, the music of Debussy became children uh, movie like with Bambi uh, for <laughs> Walt Disney, you know. But when Claude, uh, when Claude Debussy uh, did uh, this music, it was not for Bambi from Walt Disney. So I, I mean, he first invent an aesthetic and then someone else use this aesthetic to do. Uh, well. So I, 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 I think it's, you know, uh, the, the, in the history, you could see that very often, you know, an aesthetic arrived, like the modern aesthetic from the Bauhaus, and, and after it becomes something else. But it, it's first, uh, uh, and I like this idea is that we could maybe invent a kind of aesthetic. Here, yeah, of course, it's linked with the, the flow of air. There is a lot of curve because you don't want to create turbulences. There is some albedo uh, on the material. So it's, it's a, we, we are trying to to, uh, to 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 do the design according to this thing and to discover something and sometimes uh, yes we, we okay. we'll let the student have the last word. Th thank you very much, Philippe. Um, I want to just elaborate on that question a small bit um, to say the that. Question of? Uh, excuse me. You said on the question of on, what? on your question, Moisen, oh. a little bit okay. and expand it because I've noticed this shift from the disappearance of the climactic device to now there's this masquerade of climactic devices, much like Hayduck. Um, and these different characters which occupy this urban space, uh, they're producing this sort of new subject of the architectural atmosphere, but uh, also now that they're visual and can be seen and approached, uh, they have a character. Uh, I'm wondering, uh, with these characters that you've populated in the Taichung Park, um, what you, visually and perceptually you want them to be saying if they could talk? No, I, I know that uh, um, uh, when we, when I, um, I, I was thinking about what could become the park in a kind of uh, uh, um, uh, there is a one movie I think Narnia movie 
Uh, I don't know. There is a forest, and one moment there is a street lighting, you know, lost in the forest. And I personally, I like this image, you know, to yes, like you say, you see, this is a kind of magic, uh, you know, it will be like a wild forest, you know, you are in a very dense and, and dark forest, and you will find one artificial device that will be here. So it's cr it will create, personally, uh, uh, there is a character that could, uh, a kind of magic character that could uh, uh, arrive from this uh, strange mix of uh, very natural and artificial uh, element inside the park, yes. You've got them going. There's one, one other person who's like waving <laughs> madly. This, this, this will be the last. I'm the last. Okay. Um, hi, uh, I'm Marjan Sisman, uh, probably upcoming student for Harvard University. I'm Mark One. Just pointing out. <laughs> um, well, I love your. I love the idea of, of. I think it creates your ideas and whole theories. Creates this dynamic, and 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 almost fun environments and spaces. I wonder uh, what you think of if this was the norm of the of our future. Um, um, ideas and our future concepts is this was a system that we are, we were applying and considering uh, when we were designing buildings. How do you think this would have affected our lifestyles and um, um, our behavior within the buildings? How do you think this would? This I think it's very fun and dynamic, and I want to get into spaces. <laughs> <laughs> I um, wonder how yes. how men will uh, behave. Um, uh, I, um, I, th I think when I, I'm working on these uh, things, I, I also tr um, uh, study in the history of architecture what, uh, uh, what was a form of the using the climate in the history of architecture. And you could understand that some uh, type or way of living are quite uh, new uh, way of living, like the, to have uh, the kitchen, the living room, uh, the, the bedroom, like separate room. It came from the bourgeoisie from the 19th century, from the invention of the corridor. And it was not there before. When you think about the old countryside house, it was only the fireplace that create a, a field of heat and uh, Around them, it was uh, the space for uh, old people for sleeping. It was the living room, the kitchen together. It creates, it, it, so the social way was completely different than uh, the, the bourgeois social way coming from the 19th century plan of uh, with a corridor. So, uh, I think the um, I think the way the social way could be also. By using this, you could maybe be a little critic with the uh, way we are living, using fridge and, uh, you know, and uh, so I think maybe it could also uh, uh, go uh, to somewhere where we don't know exactly, but it could a little, because we will not stay like we, we are living in a certain way uh, since 200 years, but maybe it will change because it was already changed before and it could change after. So. Uh, we, I think using the climate it could uh, uh, reorganize also the, a little the social way of using the city, of course, and, uh, and, uh, and the architecture and the building, yes. Philippe, thank you very much. Thank you all very much for being here. I know.